Traveling around the world by sail has allowed me and my family to experience moments that can only be described as downright magical. But these moments haven't come easy over the years. And when it comes to boat life, you gotta pay to play. I have made an offering to the diesel gods. Maybe that was enough to appease them. Keeping our floating home in ship shape is no small task, and something seems to break almost every day. But luckily, our ever-growing to-do list wouldn't be the only thing we'd be diving into. And when your backyard looks like this, it makes all the blood, sweat, and tears worthwhile. So nice! Do I look cool or what? That yeah. was so cool. <laughs> You're I was like well tripping out on everything. <laughs> Well, I was filling dive tanks last night and uh, the dive compressor started making a horrible squeaking noise and then I took a look at it and it was smoking. Uh, and I suspect the belt, there's a, a drive belt that goes between the electric motor and the actual compressor and I think that has gone. So today's or this morning's task is to troubleshoot that. Actually, the first task this morning was to take apart the toilet because somebody put a paper towel down there who, who put the paper towel down there? My son! Your friend? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sierra had a friend over who brought her some really nice dresses. She gave you some clothes. Look at this dress. Can we see it? Yeah. Oh, cool. Is that unicorns? Yep. Yeah. And today, Sierra's my helper. She's going to hand me tools. Yep. Yeah. So where are we, Sierra? Uh, no, no. You don't know? No. Okay, so this is the back locker on Delos. Yeah. And it's where we keep a lot of things like all of the kite gear and all of the diving gear yeah. and some other things and stuff. And it's actually quite a big space. We can stand back here. Yeah, and my shark dog. Your shark dog is down here too? Shark dog is Sierra's imaginary pet. Half shark, half dog. Mm. Wait, where, where is shark dog? dog? Behind me? Behind you? No. No. Where? Inside it? Inside there? Oh, hi, Shark Dog. Hi, Shark Dog. Did it tell me? <laughs> what is this? It's our very rusty dive compressor. This is what fills our dive tanks. Yeah. So, this is the control panel. This thing is super I'm old. Shark Dog, too. Uh, this is the electric engine. This is the cover, and this is the compressor part. And we need to get this case off because the belt is back here and so then after we get that case off we can see what the problem is yeah this is a ratchet yeah okay yeah so give me the vice grips okay so i want you to put it put it on here on this bolt right here uh, on. can i show you how to do it yeah. okay watch okay so this is what we used to take out nuts and bolts watch it goes on here and then we adjust it and then we turn it Okay, can you do that? Yeah. So you do that. Whoa, you can really get in small spaces. Okay, and I'll hold the other side. Oh, perfect, Sierra. That's awesome. Almost. You gotta do it for a little while longer. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. <laughs> Are you like a baby mechanic? Yeah, Dad. <laughs> Thank you for helping me. Oh no, Sierra, look at how dirty my hand is. I think that's black stuff from the belt. But this part's gonna come off. You ready? Ooh, there it is. Ooh, the belt's still there. Our trusty Poseidon 100 dive compressor has seen better days. And 14 years of use and thousands of tanks filled in a marine environment have taken their toll. No matter the abundance of rust, it still works great, assuming the belt is in good shape. Even though the belt wasn't broken, the black dust is a good indicator that the belt is well-worn and slipping. But luckily, I've collected multiple belts over the years for the dive compressor, alternators on both engines, water pumps, and everything else on board, so I had a spare. It's a pretty close fit, and this has some adjustment, so this thing's pretty cool. If you turn this, then it basically slides the motor on these, this mount. nice and tight, like that. All right, we'll tighten this baby up and see how she does. Hopefully with any luck, we'll be filling tanks. Let's try this dive compressor, guys. Okay. 
See if we can go and do night dive tonight. Night dive! There's also whales out there, huh? Yeah. Ready? Cool. Ooh, sounds good. Woo! Yeah. We'll see you soon. Back in business. Back in business. Well, let's hope that sorted it out for a while. I think we're gonna pre-prep a little bit of dinner right now so that we don't have to do it after the dive just in case we get back sort of late. What's for dinner tonight, Kaz? Well, I'm gonna try to make a, oh, try? I'm gonna attempt to, to make a lasagna. Ooh, can I be your sous chef? Yeah, you can chop some things. Sweet. I'm happy to say that today's video is proudly sponsored by Kamikoto Knives. So we've had these knives for over two years now on board. This one is by far my favorite. Uh, I just love the way that it feels and the heaviness of it and I feel like I can chop through anything. Oh, baby, that was perfect. Uh, the knives have held up really well. They're very durable. I've just occasionally sharpened them with the whetstone. The knives are crafted from high quality Japanese steel using traditional techniques. Each knife is individually inspected comes with a lifetime guarantee and is shipped in this heavy duty ashwood box that makes it a perfect gift for the upcoming holidays. Kamikoto knives are used by Michelin star chefs and salty sailors all over the world. And right now, Kamikoto is offering a special Black Friday slash holiday sale. So if you head on over to kamikoto.com forward slash Delos, uh, link in the description below, you can get $50 off by going to that link or by entering the coupon code Delos at checkout. That's it. So grab yourself an amazing set of knives for yourself or that salty sailor you love for the holidays. Thank you very much. Back to the show. Well done, Kaz. Do I look no. cool or what? Really? No. It's a yellow limbs. Yeah. You can't see the difference? Not really. Oh. Well, let me put it on there. <laughs> it's yellow. Yeah. And the reason why, oh, sorry, I'm calling it like this. <laughs> the reason why it's yellow is because during night dives, there's certain little creatures that fluoresce. In its simplest form, fluorescence occurs when light of a high energy wavelength causes a molecule to emit light of a lower energy wavelength. The underwater world is one of the places that we can witness this phenomena in nature. And with the right tools, we're able to perceive this re-emitted light as groovy, glowing colors. This is not to be confused with bioluminescence, which we had some truly mind-blowing encounters with in Costa Rica. Oh my God. Unlike in fluorescence, where light is being absorbed and re-emitted, in bioluminescence, a chemical reaction occurs which actually creates light. Tonight, we'll be using a blue light to try and trigger this reaction. But because blue light is visible to the human eye, when used to showcase fluorescence, it can easily outshine this weak effect. To counter the blue light and enable the long fluorescent light waves to be seen, divers must use a yellow filter over their mask to be able to see it, or put the filter over the camera lens to be able to capture it, which is exactly what we plan to do. I'm really fond of these lights. These are from Nemo Power Tools. I'll put the link below. They're uh, pretty reasonably priced for a dive light and they're super bright, watch this. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, that's the white part, yeah. but then they also have red mm -hmm. and blue. Daddy, red, Do you want me to put the red on? Okay, you ready? Close your eyes. Okay, open your eyes. Ah! <laughs> okay, Sierra, we're gonna go for a night dive and our friends Peter and Octavia are gonna watch you tonight, okay? All right, we'll be back soon. Okay. It's getting dark out there. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. We're gonna go get Josh. Yeah. Hi, hey, people. Hey, our people. I'm just putting it out there to the universe that we're gonna have a whale swim by. A nocturnal whale. A nocturnal whale while we're cruising. Do you know if whales are fluorescent? Are we gonna find out? We didn't really know what to expect, since different parts of the world and even specific dive sites have different populations of marine life that are capable of fluorescing. I swam around shining my blue light on a variety of coral and fish, and it was mesmerizing. 
Since I only had one yellow filter, I had to choose between being able to see the fluorescence and being able to film the fluorescence. And I chose seeing it way more than filming it. I got totally lost in my own mind and pretty much ditched the camera. Sorry about that. Next time I'll try and do better. But luckily, Kaza was on point with the normal lights and managed to capture the incredible scenes that unraveled before us. Hi, how was that? That was cool. That was good, huh? I liked it. Yeah, yeah. it's very chill. It's Super. so chill. I saw a lot of critters. You know what? That yellow filter made the dive for me. That yeah. was so cool. <laughs> you just I was like, like lost. Tri tripping out on everything that was fluorescing. <laughs> <laughs> Who's excited? Me, me, me. We're back home. We saw lots of cool things underwater. Thank you guys for watching her. <laughs> Yeah, Warren and Erica was with us too. Yeah. But they yeah. went home to sleep. Our night dive had us itching for some more time underwater. But when I went to fire up the generator and run the compressor to fill up our tanks, I couldn't ignore a problem that had been noticing over the last few weeks. Ugh. Oh, the generator sounds terrible. It's just feeling like very rough. And when it's unloaded and when it's idling like this, you can feel like a vibration and the floor, it sounds rough. It's putting black soot on the hull. And when I do put a load on it, when I turn on the battery chargers and the water heater and put a little bit of load onto it so it consumes more fuel, then it smooths out and it runs a little bit smoother. I suspect it's the injectors. I put a little bit of injector cleaner in there. Uh, just, you know, you can fill the fuel filter with injector cleaner and run it through. And that helped for a little while, but then it came back and now it's worse than it was before. So it's an interesting problem. If anybody has had this issue, uh, it's a Kubota three cylinder. I don't know the horsepower rating, but it's a very, it's a small diesel engine. It's only an eight kilowatt uh, AC generator Onan. And um, yeah, I'm just out here. We're on the sandbar. No mechanics around, nobody to ask except you guys. So, uh, I'm just gonna dig into it and see what happens. Okay, so here's the little Kubota uh, injector one, two, and three. They're all on top here. This is the high pressure fuel pump, the injection pump. It goes up, comes in the injector, and then these are the, the return lines. So, on diesel engines, the fuel comes from the tank, which is back here. Uh, through hoses, through this fuel filter, into the injection pump. It goes through the injectors and then the excess fuel comes back through this. All three of them are kind of run together and then it goes back to the tank. Uh, so it's, it looks like it's quite easy to get to. And um, I might just pop that off and uh, see what they look like. Okay, so far so good. I've gotten the high pressure line off and the return line off. I'm just keeping these so I don't drop any crap in there covered. And so these are the injectors now. There's a little bit of corrosion on that one, which is quite strange. And there is some, some junk in there. Interesting. So next I'm gonna attempt to get these off 
and then we should see how they look. To be honest, it doesn't look all that bad. The ones I took out of the Volvo last time were nasty, but there is some, some stuff there. I was hoping for there to be something obvious, like a big chunk or something. So there's the new one versus the old one. You can definitely see some carbon buildup on the tip there. I wonder if that's affecting the injection pattern. All right, let's see how we do. You have to be careful because anything that you drop in here goes right into the cylinder, which is no point out. I'd ordered the injectors some months ago before we left Mexico, knowing that at some point I'd need to do this project. Some of the injectors were stuck pretty good, so I had to get out my big leverage bar. But all in all, it went about as smooth as a boat project could be expected to go. With the injectors in and torqued tight real good, it was time to start putting the fuel connections back on. Okay, three injectors are in. I'm putting on the fuel return now. So far so good. I actually have no idea if this is going to make a difference or not. I hope it does. Okay, uh, these are the high pressure lines going on now. They're going on pretty easy. The only thing is we've introduced a whole lot of air into the system. So when I start this up, we're going to have to bleed the air out. Sometimes it'll do it on its own, but usually I just crack open this side until I see fuel squirt out. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but it's always worked for me. Makes a little bit of a mess, but... Okay, we're going to test it out now. Well, I don't want to say too soon, but it did seem it did seem smoother. The engine definitely seemed to vibrate less. Hopefully that was it. Time will tell. We will see. Is there like a mark on my head? I slammed my head in the cockpit locker. It fell down on my head and I'm not sure if it was bleeding or not. I had made an offering to the diesel gods, so maybe that was enough to appease them. Another gorgeous day over on the side of the island. We've moved the boat over to a little place called Hapiti for a different change of view and the water is spectacular over here. It's calm, there's no wind, but it's freaking hot. So we've been taking advantage of the swimming pool. What do you think, Dugs? So nice. So nice? <laughs> what is it? Is it a saltwater pool? Yeah, saltwater pool. Saltwater pool. Autumn, come in. Are you guys ready? Here we go! Woo! Oh, it's the worst belly flop ever! Ah, so nice! Yeah. Let me see that smooth diving action. That smooth diving action? Bear with this! <laughs> yeah! Woo! Whoa! So smooth! morning well welcome to boat life just as i thought i was getting a handle on everything a whole bunch of stuff broke basically at the same time so we were out cruising around in the dinghy and uh we went to start it and this happened this is the, the pull start with the little handle basically this thing came all the way out something got caught in the assembly it spun because the engine was started it sucked 
the line all the way back in and just ripped itself to shreds. So we've been paddle and tune from the beach. We actually moved Delos uh, closer to this beach and I'm supposed to get those parts tomorrow. So I gotta put that on. At the same time, I'm gonna change the oil in the outboard because uh, it's a four stroke and also the lower end gear oil. All right, let's see if we can do an oil change without making a ridiculous mess. It's a pretty tall order. I usually make a pretty big mess. We'll see. Yeah, so of course I had to lift the dinghy up because there's not enough clearance. And I want the outboard to be uh, totally vertical when I drain the fluid. It's good, the oil looks uh, clean. If there's uh, milky white in it, that means you're getting water inside. So uh, I'm happy to see that it's not. And when we fill this, uh, I'm just gonna let it drain. I'll pump out the oil with my vacuum pump, which is super cool if you don't have one, by the way, vacuum pumps are awesome to have for all sorts of things. And uh, then I'm gonna fill it from the bottom up until uh, the fluid comes out of the top hole. That's it. Oil filter, oil fill. Oil dipstick. I can't remember where the drain is. Oh, the drain's right here on this one. Which is a very inconvenient spot because then it just leaks all over the place. Ah! Oh! oh bucket. Got it. Got it. I've cut the little lip off of this so that I can snug it right up in here. It can make a minimal mess, but it usually makes something. Oh, look at that. Oh, shit. It's gonna be enough. <laughs> gonna let the vacuum do the work. Okay, here's the old one that is just in pieces, destroyed, and then here's the new one. It looks identical. So I'm just gonna bolt it on, see how we go. Hopefully with any luck we'll be running today. That looks better. Good to go. There's one other thing that I think is pretty cool uh, that we put on this engine, super easy and inexpensive to do, and it's an hour meter. And you can see that we've got 318 hours and you can just literally put it anywhere in the engine. And then it just has this wire uh, that you run and then it just loops down here. You just wrap it around one of the leads uh, to the spark plug. If you can see it here. And that, uh, yeah, that's what tells it when the engine's running or not, so you know how to do the, your services. So last thing I gotta do is fill it with oil. I need to use the grease uh, zerk gun to uh, lubricate the uh, zerks for the tilt and the steering. And then that's it, we should be back in business. It's been uh, nine days without a dinghy. So we've just been paddling everywhere, which is cool. But um, yeah, it's like having your car broken. Okay, it's all back together. Cross your fingers, hold your thumbs, and hopefully it will start. Otherwise, we're really in trouble. Ready? Ah, nervous. Oh. Oh. Woo! Oh. Yeah! Nice, good job, right? High five. Up next on Delos, we celebrate Kaz's birthday in style, meet some whaley underwater friends, and continue to tackle our never-ending list of boat jobs. <laughs> Cheesy butt. Hi. 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 Tell a story to your fans. 
Okay, go. I'm on the wrong throat. The wrong throat. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 <laughs>